Hi. So this is that secret part that only rewatchers get to watch. Um, I'm going to wait for some people to roll in. I am live on Instagram right now, and then I will get started on this little pop-up class about fermented garlic honey. Um, okay, so if you're just joining me, I am sitting outside today. Um, it's hot. You can hear that cicada going, probably. Um, oh, actually, June bug. <laughs> um, but I think some people call them cicadas. I think we call them June bugs. They might be different things. Um, and it's slightly windy, and it's like 102 out right now, but I'm in the shade. Um, anyhow, so I'm going to show you how to make fermented garlic honey. Um, I have a bunch of what I'm just going to call seed garlic that I pulled. Um, we have a lot of garlic growing, and then we have one little area that I had planted in like the first year we moved in, like three years ago. And... <laughs> It kind of just got neglected and we have hard clay soil and it came up again this year without being pulled and I was like the heat got you so I'm just gonna use these little perfect little garlic cloves that aren't fully developed but they're they're well enough for what I'm making today so basically this is super easy I am just going to take a jar now you can use store-bought garlic now you'll see a lot of people telling you to peel it I don't want you to do that <laughs> because you'll lose the beneficial bacteria that you need um, to start your ferment. So I'm really just gonna take my garlic here and I'm gonna cut the root off and I'm gonna cut that top stem off. I'm gonna brush off a little bit of excess dirt. I'm not that worried about it. Don't freak out if you're getting this from your garden. Remember, we need the basically the probiotics on this to start fermenting the honey. Um, and then I'm going to cut my clove in half. <laughs> I don't think you could do that with scissors on a normal garlic clove. Ooh, that's strong. This is a spicy purple variety, I think. I remember planting. So basically, I'm just going to trim these. And I'm going to flop them into my jar. And again, I want you to leave the skin on. Um, even if it's store-bought, you need all the help you can get um, from getting that beneficial bacteria in there to kickstart it. Now, um, this isn't like a tincture to where you have to fill the entire jar. Um, but obviously the more you get in there, the stronger it's going to be. But also, this is going to ferment. So you don't want it to be too full or it's going to spill over. So I'm just chopping, dropping. <laughs> um, so how's everybody doing? Everybody doing pretty good? Um, yeah, you want to use fresh garlic. I mean, you could use dried garlic and honey to get an infused flavor, but you're not going to get a ferment to it because we're using basically the moisture content of the garlic to knock down the... Um, or to increase, I should say, the water content in the honey, which is what kickstarts the fermentation. So it ends up watering out your honey, and then the bacteria, the good bacteria that's present on the garlic, starts it fermenting. Now, of course, if you're using raw honey and such, there's a little bit of good bacteria in there too, obviously, that'll help start it. But um, I've seen people say that you can't use pasteurized honey to do this, and that's not correct. Um, it's just that if your garlic isn't, still teeming with like fresh living bacteria like if it's been bleached um then nothing will happen because there's no bacteria in there to kickstart it right so this is garlic that i've pulled um from a neglected bed here <laughs> um but it you know you could use garlic from the store or garlic from your farmer's market you can use garlic scrapes if you have those um so yeah i'm just here hanging out using up some of this forgotten about garlic because now technically I haven't forgotten about it again I don't know that you could cut garlic this way if you were um, using full garlic you'd probably have to use a knife I'm also so professional that my jar my jar is resting on a rock <laughs> and I'm just under a random apple tree um, so yeah I'm gonna probably fill this jar up well until I'm out of garlic which I don't know maybe a little over halfway probably um, but so beyond the fact that this will taste amazing, you can use this to any, any type of cooking. It's fantastic. Um, 
baste it on like chicken or ribs or you can use it in like a baked bean recipe whatever you want you, that you need sweetness and garlic fermented garlic honey is fantastic for that um but also from like um an herbal standpoint it's really amazing for coughs colds fevers um just general immune support garlic is fantastic for cardiovascular health gut health fighting off bacteria in your gut and this is such an easy one to do because even if you don't have a garden even if you live in an inner city you can probably find fresh garlic and honey somewhere right so you can do this you can do this at home um, if you are buying it that way make sure that the honey is raw just so you do have um, more of a capacity to start a ferment right now some people um, some people get freaked out about the concept of botulism. I hear you, especially because they're like, there's botulism in honey, and that's why you can't give it to like kids under like one or two years old. There's botulism spores in honey, but they can't really grow because botulism doesn't like sugary environments. That's why you can make jam and jelly in a water bath, but if you're doing something like vegetables, you have to use um, you have to use a pressure cooker, right? Because the sugar that's present in your jams or jelly stops botulism from growing. Same concept here. Um, you're not gonna get botulism growing in, in your fermented honey because it's too much sugar. It's just too much sugar. But I understand, it's a fear that people have for sure. Um, but yeah, it's super simple. Somebody said they like that I show that I don't work in a pristine kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> People have a lot of fear. And I understand um, the markets have spent millions of dollars making people terrified of nature and dirt. And I'm like, yeah, but like everything that sustains you literally like grows in or like depends on dirt. Right? Like just because something's been sanitized and sterilized doesn't make it better for you. Um, in fact, if you're digging garlic out of your garden and using it, you'll probably end up with more beneficial bacteria in your ferment than store-bought. But again, if store-bought is all you have access to, there's like literally no shame in that. Um, so yeah, I'm just getting this ready, you know, and I'm wiping off some of the excess dirt or any of the peels that want to come off that are kind of a little funky looking, but I'm not terrified about it because I literally know that I need that I need that bacteria and what's cool is if you start working with ferments from like your own environment you start getting um, particular probiotic strains that are unique to your area um, did you know that everybody has like like they used to have like bioregional like gut health right like the bacteria that's present on like the wild blackberries or the garlic that I pull where I'm at in Northeast Oregon won't be the same that's present in like Ohio or on the East Coast and your body adapts to that and it adapts to the messages that the environment sends your body and that's not even like spirituality woo woo type shit that's like science um, and so the more we eat from our local bioregion especially if it hasn't been like hardcore like sanitized and sterilized the more our body is able to adapt to the things that are around us um, and it's just a really awesome thing to consider um, and you know when you take probiotics from the store they're almost always um, dairy based even if even if lactose intolerant people can use them but traditionally our guts would have been filled with soil based probiotics and those are harder to find harder to buy way more expensive but also you could just you know not wash the berries you pick <laughs> You know, or eat a wild apple, garlic from your garden, and by all means, get the excess dirt off if you're worried about it. But I mean, uh, and of course, it depends on your particular area. Um, you know, if there's diseases in your area that you can get from soil, that's something that you need to be aware of. But not everybody has to be terrified. Um, okay, so I've got that jar a little over halfway filled up. You notice that I just kind of barely chopped them in half. I didn't feel the need to like you know, mince or kill them like completely. I just want a little bit more surface space. And now, <laughs> what's funny is I have, I have big buckets of raw honey that we've produced as well as um, that we get from a local guy here. And I still buy these so I can refill them because it's so much easier to make a video. <laughs> right, can you imagine if I'm out here with this like big ass, 80 pound bucket of honey and I'm like oh. <laughs> and uh I I know I could just buy um like brand new containers like this but I just refill it um okay so I'm just gonna fill it up 
just like you'd imagine I'd fill it up. And now this is a fermented food. And one thing that I really don't want people to miss out on is you're going to let this sit for like four weeks. And I suggest putting it in like a cool, dark place. Not like fridge cold, but you know, not in direct sunlight. And then um, sit it on top of like a small plate or something because it might start bubbling over. Um, even though I'm going to show you not to fill it all the way to kind of accommodate some of that headspace. But what's a shame is that when people are done making this, they have a tendency to get rid of the garlic and just use the honey. Don't do that. <laughs> use the garlic. Um, even if the even if the um, the skins are still on it, I want you to mash it up. Sometimes you can kind of pick the skins out, but then you can use that paste and things. What I usually do is um, like freeze it in like a little type of a like kind of like a cube. Um, even though they're it's like a candy mold I have, and I use them for like making like liver pucks and stuff, but um, or like fat bombs, and I freeze it in these little pucks, and then I can just like. Like toss it into whatever soup or the skillet or whatever and it's a really really nice um complex garlic flavor so i'm having to let that sink in a bit now i'm not going to fill it all the way up i'm going to give it like um i'm going to give it like a solid like probably i don't know maybe one inch head i'm going to fill it to probably about there right to the lip but, I mean, to the shoulder, I should say, because I want to give it a little bit of room to bubble <laughs> without completely spilling over. Now, if you um, are the type of person that forgets about something, uh, no shame, I am that person too. I suggest um, when you put your lid on, I, I only want you to do it like like barely finger tight like you're canning something. Um, just graphia. It's fun. Or just sit it on top. <laughs> But mainly, if you if you put this on there and you tighten it really bad, it could explode because it's a ferment, right? But if you give it a good crack and you, you know that, like, the lid can, like, rattle a little bit, what'll happen is that air can escape. Now, if you happen to have one of those jars for, like, fermenting lids that lets air out but not in, that's a good option. Although, uh, if you fill it up too much, the, the honey can, like, ferment and bubble out the top. Um... But how easy was that to make? How easy was that to make? Now, somebody asked if, because it's a ferment, if it would help with acid reflux. Um, if it is from lack of stomach acid, yeah. So a lot of people, when they get like acid reflux or heartburn, it's usually not because you're producing too much acid. It's because you don't have enough bacteria in your stomach to make an, or you're not making enough acid, you're not breaking down the food correctly. So sometimes fermented foods can help with that if that's the cause. Um, so yeah, now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to very gently cap it. Should have brought a label in the pen and I would mark this when it's gonna be ready in about three to four weeks. Now you can use it before then. I swear to God. <laughs> For people who don't have dysgraphia, putting lids on is easy. My brain's like, you know what? I don't communicate with your fucking hand right. <laughs> so it's always like, oh god, here comes the part with the lid. So you're going to let this sit for about four weeks in a cool dark place, not in your fridge. And then um, it'll get thinned out so it'll be much easier to strain at the end of the time you're going to strain out the garlic you can save it freeze it mash it up into a paste like i talked about but then you're going to use the honey now you can use this for up to a year it will last a year in a cool dark place i'm not gonna lie i store mine in the fridge just because i'm like uh where i live the temperatures fluctuate like it's going to be really hot here all summer long and sometimes I don't always have the air conditioner on <laughs> you know and so I'm like I might get back to the house I'm like oh my god it's like 98 degrees in this house right because I'm not going to pay to like run the air conditioner while I'm not here um so I like to just pop it in the fridge um but then you can use the spoonfuls at a time in cooking. You can add it to your tea. I like to add it for those of you who've watched my um, onion and thyme recipe for like if you need to like hack some shit out of your lungs. You can use this honey in that. So remember, I'm always looking to fill gaps, right? Like, and I'm always looking to find ways to incorporate herbs as 
food. When you start using these as food and stop looking at them as something maybe pharmaceutical, what happens is you just kind of naturally use them more. They're just kind of a casual part of your existence and they're supporting your health in that way versus having to like rigidly remember to like have this whole routine with herbs, right? Just learn how to make a daily casual relationship and there's no easier way than incorporating them into your food because I don't really care who you are. You have to eat every day. <laughs> No matter what some current diet person is telling you, you need to eat some food. Um, but I really love this. It's so simple to do. It's fantastic for sore throats, digestive health, you know, getting your immune system up and running. And really, honestly, it just really tastes amazing. And it's how easy was that? I literally just put garlic cloves into a jar and put honey over top of them. And I'm going to let it sit for like four weeks. Now, again, you can start using it before then. Go away, fly. Um, and some people might freak out if it turns blue. <laughs> um, that's natural. Sometimes it happens with garlic tinctures as well. They can just turn blue. Happens a lot when you ferment stuff. It doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. Um, so yeah, that's fermented garlic honey. And the most important thing to know is that you are absolutely smart enough to do this. How hard was that? It, I mean, even if it was hard, you are still smart enough to do this and I need you to understand that and so does the June bug singing around. <laughs> um, so if you like my random pop-up videos, if you're re-watching this on YouTube and you like my random videos, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, turn on notifications. All this stuff helps other people learn that they're smart enough to do this too. It helps other people find me. It helps you see when I post new videos. If you want to support my existence and my capacity to um, teach freely, consider um, heading to my shop by following the link in my bio or the description on YouTube and calling something home because the shop is completely how I support my existence and how I'm able to teach freely. Um, and again, most importantly of all, you are absolutely smart enough to do this. You can completely do this no matter what you've been made to believe. You don't need to pay somebody thousands of dollars to learn. You just need to allow yourself to be curious and get started because that's really just, just start. Just grab some garlic and some honey and get to it because you've got this, folks. All right, so thanks for joining me in my pop-up class, and I'll see you next time. Bye.